Hello everyone, I'm Kenny Potter, editor for School and Concert Choral Music with ECS Publishing, and today we're spending a little time with Dr. Eric Nelson. Eric, welcome. Thank you. It's a delight to be here. Well, we have known each other for a few years, and for those who don't know much about Eric, he is one of the few people that really has succeeded in his career in so many different areas of choral music. He is highly regarded in church music circles, as well as collegiate circles, and also in the community choir circles. And so, Eric, I have great respect for you as a musician, as well as a person. And so we're glad uh, that you're spending a few minutes with us. Thank you, Kenny. So Eric is at Emory University, Director of Choral Studies, as well as he is the Artistic Director for Atlanta Master Chorale. He's wearing his colors proudly on his chest. And speaking of Atlanta Master Chorale, we have a series with Morning Star. And so can you share just a little bit about the Atlanta Master Chorale series? So Atlanta Master Chorale is a community chorus. It's a fairly large chamber choir as chamber choirs go. Um, somewhere between 50 and 60 singers, and it's made up of singers from the Atlanta area that are wonderfully trained choral musicians. A third of them maybe are professional choral musicians by vocation, teachers and conductors, and then the others have day jobs, but they were trained and sing at a very high level. And so that sound is in my ear, certainly, as I'm doing arrangements for choirs. I'm imagining uh, the Master Chorale singing them, which is a, a pretty nice bonus, I think. The choir has a, a motto, which is kind of our North Star, and it's where music touches spirit. And such things can be marketing ploys that don't mean too much. But for us, it really is the whole point. We're the whole reason why we rehearse is to get to sing for our audience and to try to sing in a way that in some manner will reflect the human condition, uh, either the way things are or the way things should be, right, or might be. And so the arrangements in the Atlanta Master Choral, Choral Series are texts and tunes that move me and move us and have the chance to communicate something to our audience. In the Morning Star series, those tend to be sacred music, obviously, often arrangements of tunes, though there's some original things in there as well. And on the ECS side, there's some things also in the series that are um, not sacred. But all of them are, I think, mm -hmm. is that there's a mix of head and heart there. I completely agree with that. And that's something that I think is what... Uh draws so many people to your music uh, as well as to your concert. It's a beautiful blend of head and heart. And so we have a piece that has just come out, Down in the River to Pray, and I am planning on programming it as soon as I can. And I think that this is a piece that can cross over, not only for church choirs, but also maybe for high school honor choirs. Can you just share a little bit about Down in the River to Pray? I was introduced to the tune years ago when that movie came out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, where art thou, I think. So far, it may have been the first time I heard the tune. We, I mean, we all fell in love with it. It's just such a fantastic folk song. And it's just a wonderful tune. Mm -hmm. The genesis of this arrangement is unique. It was approached by two students that were in my concert choir at Emory. And they were doing a joint recital together, a joint senior recital. It's their capstone project as voice majors and wanted to sing something together. And rather than doing something from a musical or something from an opera, um, they wanted to do an arrangement of Down in the River to Pray. And they couldn't find one. And so they came to me hat in hand <laughs> and said, would you be willing to write an arrangement for us? I, I said, sure. And I did. And the scaffolding of what is now the choral arrangement of SATB started with that arrangement. And I thought to myself, as it kind of took shape, this would be really terrific as a choral anthem. And then, you know, kind of added the other parts to it for sure. The trick 
And what I kind of pride myself on in a lot of my arrangements is when you're doing a hymn tune or a folk song like this, the star of the show is the melody. The star of the show is the tune itself. Mm -hmm. And you can't just sing it straight or why did you bother to make an arrangement? And you can't add too many bells and whistles and curly cues and loop-de-loos or you lose sight of why you love the tune in the first place. Right. And that balance of letting it speak and then giving it something that makes it special is the craft for me. And trying to strike that balance is very subjective. The analogy I use sometimes is like a jeweler who's given a lovely diamond. And the trick is getting it cut right and putting it in a setting, right? So that you you can see the diamond in your palm, but it, if you put it in a setting, it seems more beautiful, right? You turn it in the light and you notice a facet of it you didn't notice before. So all that, I think, is the goal of the arranger. And uh, I'm delighted that you're happy with Down in the River. I am too. It came out great, I thought. Well, I completely agree. Just out of curiosity, any projects, these are compositional or performance projects coming up for you? Well, you know, there's always a few. Right now, I'm in my conductor mode. As we're having this interview, it's only a couple of weeks uh, away from all the big Christmas concerts. I'm conducting six Christmas concerts in two weeks. So that's consuming my planning at the moment. But I'm always excited to have some kind of composition or arranging thing in my future. Well, uh, I think knowing that you have six concerts that you're preparing for, that this might be a good place to stop <laughs> so <laughs> that you can get back to planning. Uh, Eric Nelson, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it.